Radio back in the studio today. It's been, it's been a while since we've done a video in here actually. It's currently raining outside, which is great to see. It's very, very dry here on the east coast of Australia at the moment. All the grass is pretty much dead, the bush is drying up, and we are coming into summer. And it's made me realize that there's probably an aspect of the channel that I haven't really integrated with you guys, and I want to know if you are interested in me actually putting more of these videos up as to being prepared for different scenarios and different disasters. I out here live completely off grid where I live, so we run off, off solar power, generator and batteries. So being self-sufficient is very important to me. I like to be prepared for, for lots of different scenarios depending on what it is, but I think being prepared is the most important part of it. I do have a bit of a sort of list of things that I consider to be on those those top priorities for emergency situations when you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, like in Australia, we have pretty bad bushfires. Australia is on fire, and it's bigger than you think. 12.35 million acres of land have been burnt. And just even the current the current climate of where the, the world is right now and what's kind of happening overseas is to say that we're, we're never... I suppose in Australia, we kind of think that we're kind of... we're away from all that sort of stuff, but it's... It's never a given thing. You, you may have a bushfire in your area, the power lines go down, and then you need some sort of power system to run your fridge and keep your food cold until that power is restored. The bushfire may not affect you directly, but could definitely impact the infrastructure that's around you. So a company I've been really having good dialogue with lately is Jackery, and they're a power company similar to the other reviews I've done on the EcoFlows and the Blue Eddies, and these guys just seem to want to just have more conversation about how to integrate their product better into the Australian market. And I've actually been using their 2000 Pro in America for about a month. So they sent me one over there while I was there. And uh, all of us guys were really impressed on how that thing went, especially with the solar that they sent us for that unit. So in Melbourne this year, I had a great conversation with Jackery. They gave me their 1000 Explorer Pro, which I have here beside me. And it's basically, if you want to consider it a top sort of level item I'd consider in being prepared for worst case scenarios, aside from water and food, is that having some sort of device to protect other things in your house. So if you want to, if you want to store your food and, and keep your food good, I mean, you don't need a TV, you don't need all these other things in an emergency. You just need to keep the invested money you have in food and stuff going. So. Having a power pack, I definitely do put that on the top priority list, but uh, this unit here that I have, this is the Jackery 1000 Explorer Pro, like I mentioned. So this is the equivalent to, in our terms of understanding it, if you're running it at 12 volt, it will be about a 75 amp hour to 80 amp hour battery. But the best things about these is, is that your inverter is built in, your MPPT is built in as well, so your solar controller, and then you also have all your outlets built into it as well, your charging's built in, and your battery's built in. So unlike the systems that we put in our vehicles, everything is in this square, little, tight, little box. So it's really good in that aspect for portability from moving from a caravan to a four-wheel drive to a boat into your house for any scenario that you may run into, and then having the options of running 800 watts of solar into this unit as well, I think is really, really handy. So basically on the front, you've pretty much got all your outlets and stuff, and then on the back you have your inputs for charging. So here on the front, you have a light, and I like that the, the glass here or the plastic cover is actually frosted, so it's not super in your face, and it gets brighter with the second click, and then you have a SOS function as well. Straightforward button, and then you have this nice little rubber cover to protect it that just clips over the top like that. Here you have our display, so we're on 15% at the moment. I've been using using the Jackery a fair bit to actually run the Starlink while my generator was down for the past two weeks. So over here, we have our display button. So you simply press the display button and it'll just give you a straight forward reading on the front there. Over here, you have a DC cigarette socket, 
just there. So you can uh, run any sort of cigarette socket items with the on and off switch there. Here you have your two 240 outlets. Here we have the Australian plugs. So 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter built into this unit as well. So you can run anything up to like a thousand watts, um, whatever you like. And you just got your button just there to turn that on and off. And then just here on the side, you have all your USBs for charging phones, laptops, iPads, computers, drones, like anything you want in that sort of aspect that runs a USB-C or a USB. So your two A ports are 18 watts max and then USB-C is 100 watt max. So you can definitely charge your laptop and stuff off those. So we'll run over some of the specs. I'm really bad with remembering all these numbers. So I'm gonna just read them directly off the information I have here. So the capacity of the unit is 1,002 watts. So like I mentioned, that's about 75 amp hours, 80 amp hours to 12 volts if you convert it that way. So that's just to put it in the terms that we understand. So about a 75 amp hour battery if you're gonna run just 12 volt devices off it. A lithium ion uh, is, the is the battery uh, chemistry. Um, you got a thousand cycles to 80% capacity. So you can cycle this a thousand times and you've still got 80% capacity in the battery's life. Um, you got BMS, over voltage protection and short circuit protection in this as well. And then the weight of it is 11.5 kilograms. The charge times are 1.8 hours via your AC cable. This is a prototype cable that they've actually sent me. So the conversations that I've had with Jackery, we've actually had like a few hours of conversations about this sort of stuff. Um, in person and over the phone, and is that Anderson is a big part of the Australian market into integrating this into these power packs, so that way they're more versatile for more people then, because some of us have our own fixed solar panels in our vehicle, some of us use 50 amp Anderson to charge our power packs and stuff like that, or charge our batteries in our back, in the four-wheel drive or in our canopy, and so forth. So this is a prototype cable that they've actually sent me to test out and hopefully this will be available with these units very shortly to be able to uh, charge the unit in different ways other than just their barrel style connectors or via the car charging, which can take up to 12 hours if you're charging it with the cigarette um, style socket. So that's just not viable for us. I'll show you my tests now of running these two units into the back of it and uh, what I experienced uh, via a 50 amp Anderson. I do have a live feed Anderson plug here that we're gonna to use to test out these new connectors they've sent me. So these are prototypes at the moment. So these connectors are quite good. I can't see these like rattling or falling out. You can see I'm moving the unit quite a lot there and, the, and the, that's not actually pulling out. So I think these would be quite good for corrugation, things like that, compared to some of the other power packs. Obviously, it'd be great to have the Anderson directly plugged into the back of it. But again, this is a global product and they need to have the most versatility for most of the markets. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the Andersons. We're going to connect one and see what the input is. And then we're going to connect both with the splitter and see what we're getting on the input. Okay, so I have the first one connected. We've just clicked over to charging. So from the vehicle, we'll pull in 109 watts. Just let that settle down. The hours are going down. Once it's, just, it's obviously calculating how much power it's getting. And we'll see where it stops at. So it's still, still dropping. 9.8 hours. It's obviously charging. You can see it charging from the vehicle. And remember, we're just going through one of the inputs at the moment. We're gonna use the splitter here in a second and see what that increases to. Based off just one input is around eight hours to charge it. So if you're driving for the day, you'd have this unit fully charged by the time you got to camp. So now let's put the splitter in and we'll see what that increases to now. Okay, so we have our feed, we have our splitter going into the both ports on the back of the Jackery. Turn the unit around and we'll see where it's at. Right, we're up to 218 watts now. You can see the hours to char fully charge is dropping significantly, but this is just giving us massive versatility to be able to still use this as an independent unit and walk around with it and stuff, or move it from vehicle to vehicle or boat to, to whatever, to each campsite and things like that. But also allow us to use our vehicle solar panels that are already fixed and use our vehicle charging 
directly from our alternators to bring down that overall charge time yeah 4.1 hours to charge so four hours and you'd have the jackery explorer 1000 pro fully charged you could charge one via your vehicle and then you could charge one via your solar panel that's fixed to your vehicle so you're getting um some green energy coming in at least if you do have fixed solar panels or run both the fixed solar panels depending how many you have so this is the first one of these power pack companies that's actually listened to me regarding the andersons and is actually implementing things and trying to make change to suit the australian market which i think is really really awesome of jackery i have mentioned it about some other power packs that they need to have more anderson integration and unfortunately there's nothing yet coming to the market so it's great to see jackery have made these little test units here for me and hopefully this will be in the production models and we'll just have to wait and see what jackery uh decides so i'll show you guys this little bag of stuff that i actually carry with me so i have like the pv style connectors to anderson uh, i have an extension cord in here as well I have a, a meter to be able to, to read uh, different inputs and stuff. I have different solar connect, obviously the, the red one. I think that's on my red arc panels. I have that splitter I just showed you. Um, I have direct to battery clamps via Anderson in case like one of my mates gets a flat battery. We can charge or, or do whatever. Then I have a, a couple of leads, extension leads of Anderson. So that's just a really good little pack to have with you uh in any of these situations where you go camping and you may have different solar panels and stuff but just gives you a wide variety of connectivity being able to connect different panels with different things and uh yeah and now i can add i can add these to that pack now as well for the jackery when i go camping i can charge the jackery via the vehicle or the fixed solar panels so you have your ac port just here so charging it via ac at home and then this is where the barrel connectors go in. These barrel connectors are probably some of the best ones I've seen so far in this, this market. These ones actually clip in pretty firmly because that may be a concern for you of these things actually falling out or rattling out. And I don't think that's an issue. I think you could be pretty confident to say that if you had these plugged into one into your vehicle and one into solar, you'd be definitely getting um, a good charge and wouldn't have to worry about these falling out unless something physically hit them and pushed them out. Uh, I think you could be pretty confident that they wouldn't come out. I've actually done a, a, a drag test with them. We'll do it here again now to see if we can pull the unit. So I'm pulling that directly back right now and then they just come out. So definitely pretty, pretty sturdy barrel connectors to be able to drag the weight of this unit, which is about 11 kilos. So other ways of charging the unit, you can also buy the Jackery solar panels, which you could run up to 800 watts into this unit. So you could have a full array of sun and charging time on that really depends on how much sun you have, if you have cloud cover. So it's hard to give you those specs. So this week I did some testing with some different solar panels. I have a red arc amorphous blanket that I normally carry in the F truck. Uh, for emergencies in case something happens to my panels on the rooftop tent they get smashed or something i have another way of actually charging the vehicle via solar so we'll test that unit on the jackery and see how we go and then we've also got the jackery solar 100 watt solar panels that we'll test on the unit as well and what inputs we're actually getting via each panel and just having having this as an option which i really hope jackery start including these um, because I think this is a great way of integrating product that we already have to this unit. So if I had already gone out and invested a bunch of money in solar panels and then I two weeks later found this unit on the market and I wanted to buy one, but I knew that I couldn't charge it because there was no cable um, simply for that fact. I think that power companies that limit people being able to charge via any power source they want they really limit the, the purchaser then to have to buy their panels and I think that would put a lot of people off. So now having these Anderson plugs, hopefully Jackery will include these here in the future. Fingers crossed, but I'll keep you guys updated on that anyway. Okay, so here we have the Solar Saga 100 watt solar panels. Uh, output 100 watts, 20 volts. So nice little cool foldable design. 
So I've had these out here for about 15 minutes. So that's pretty good. We're charging 91 watts out of a 100 watt panel. And at that current state of charge, that's at 17% the battery is. It'd take 9.6 hours to charge it if we left it in these current conditions. So it is lunchtime right now, 12 o'clock, sun's in the middle of the sky. And then to pack these panels up, basically you just stand them up vertically and you bring them together. So they fold up pretty compact and they are magnetic as well. So they just snap together. These are probably some of the nicest panels, like that functionality I really like compared to some of the other panels I've been given. But how good is that? USB-C, five volt, three amp. It's got a little LED there to tell you that you've got power coming in and a USB-A. So if you didn't want to use your battery pack, you can charge devices directly from the Jackery solar panels. That is bloody awesome. Okay, so I've got my Red Arc solar panel out. This is an amorphous uh, cells blanket. So it's 112 watts. We've gone directly to the panel and directly into the back of the Jackery. So that way I'm not having heaps of connections. So we have 113 watts coming in. How good is that? Okay, I was just, just checking that if this panel would produce more power, um, but it's not. So it's actually gone down now, it's at 93 watts. Obviously, because we've got connections in there, so we're losing some current. So that's the splitter that I just had on there. Run them both in, so you don't need to do that. You can just run one, and you'll get the maximum out of this panel, which is absolutely awesome. But that's what I'm trying to explain to companies like Jackery, is that Andersons, we use them for everything. Like, even a company like Red Arc has an Anderson fitted to their solar panels. They don't have any other connections, like barrel connections, things like that. Everything we use here is Anderson. Usually when I get these power packs, I like to fully charge them and then I'll start charging all my camera gear off at my computers, laptops and all that sort of stuff for about three or four weeks. I'll continually cycle this unit and charge all of my devices. Okay, this might be a long stretch, but I just bought a new DeWalt uh, vacuum cleaner a couple of weeks ago. I've got the Jackery here. Let's, uh, let's give it a go, let's see what happens. Turn her on. Oh, no, nah, didn't like that. Okay, so I just pressed it again and now it's actually... Oh, no, nope. doesn't like that. So it ran there for about, I don't know, 10 seconds, but first time it clicked straight off, obviously, because it's got to boost up. But I'm wondering if it... Yeah, it just ran for 10 seconds then, but it didn't uh, didn't like that at all. So. Righto, angle grinder. This is 800 watts. Runs that fine. It's actually running the compressor. That's crazy. So I'm really keen to know if you guys want to see more videos on preparedness. Again, I'm not a full-blown prepper and stuff, but I do prepare for worst case scenarios just because of where I live. But if you guys want to get more involved in that sort of stuff, um, it's definitely something that I'm interested in and I do on a daily basis and I have throughout most of my life is, is definitely being prepared for worst case scenarios and what may happen and, and just having stockpiles of stuff so that way I don't have to always run back to the shops. Again, like I do live an hour from the shops, so it's good to just have the stuff when I need it rather than be looking for it in those sort of times of um, panic and, and whatever else. I'm definitely putting these power packs at pretty high up the list uh, as to things to get. I could definitely do more videos like this if you're interested. So drop it in the comments and let me know and I'll make sure to do some videos about that um, to get you guys better prepared for different scenarios. Um, that's it from me. Stay safe and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. See you later.